Hey, this is Morning Perfect Base. I'm Vin Velding, and I'm going to share this to Reddit, so I'll make the intro short. I'm going to talk about making a magic format while doing some Minecraft. Rather in or you're out. So, uh, for better or for worse, I helped make a magic format. I'm not here to sell you for or against it. Uh, I'm sharing my experience because the universe is beyond thing has caused an inflection point. That was it's kind of a pretentious word to use for that. Uh, if you're caught up on your Magic the Gathering drama, you guess that I'm talking about Captain. And you're saying, I thought Captain was dead. And then I would start to quote Big Jake. And then I would remember that like three of you know about a 1971 John Wayne film. And instead, I would just uh, drink. If you don't know, where is he? There he is. Uh, I'm going to go around to get him. Um, the Captain format is a democratically managed Magic the Gathering format created when Wizards of the Coast, the people who make magic, announced a crossover product with comic book and television show intellectual property, The Walking Dead. Uh, YouTube being YouTube and time being finite. Uh, I won't list all the reasons this made magic players unhappy, but it did, and they made a format to ban The Walking Dead. Uh, the Walking Dead cards. If you don't play magic at all, magic is a game where each player starts with 20 life, and they use the 60 cards in their deck to reduce their opponent's life to zero, and you can tweak those values to change the experience of the game. You make a new, a new format. If you do, you change the value of the cards. The player has, uh, the player starts with 40 life instead of 20. A card that does three damage is, oh, well, okay, you're just gonna die yourself then. Okay, and gotcha, right. Um, then the three damage card is gonna be half as value as it used to be. It only brings your opponent half as close to losing. Um, that means some formats have to ban cards to keep the experience that they're uh, trying to make. And Magic players, I'm talking in broad strokes, please don't bust my balls. Now, most Magic formats are designed around the experience first, and they manage the cards second to keep that experience. And that kind of resembles Magic's own top-down, bottom-up design philosophies for card creation. There are, there are exceptions. Uh, Pauper, for instance, uses cards as a rarity, uh, uses card rarity as a simple rule to create lower-powered experience. Um, and that is a pretty broad statement, so go ahead and fight me on that one, nerd. Why was I even open? But Captain is cutting against the grain a little, little more than that. By removing the Walking Dead cards to create an experience of not dealing with the Walking Dead cards. For, for reasonable ideological reasons, that and the democratic ideology are the only things that set it apart from its parent format, Commander. Otherwise, it's identical, and that's going to be important later. In a previous video, I covered the beginning of the format. I've had like two videos in the past six months, so if you care, it's, it's, it's all in there. You know how to use YouTube. Uh, on Feb I've had notes. I've had notes uh, on doing the middle of the format for a while, but I wasn't sure when to do it. I mean, when does, when does the middle end, right? On February 25th, Wizards of the Coast announced they were doing more crossover stuff, specifically with Lord of the Rings and Warhammer 40k. In addition, they erected a wall between those crossovers. This is blocked. When did I block this off? Specifically with Lord of the Rings and 40k. In addition, they erected a wall between those crossovers, including The Walking Dead and, and Magic at Large. All the crossovers will now be in universes beyond and kept intellectually and visually separate from the regular Magic stuff. It was also accompanied by an announcement that Wizards of the Coast will expand their e-commerce and direct-to-consumer services, which were part of the problem that people had with the Walking Dead cards. Interesting Captain Spite, and I feel that this really marks the end of the middle for Captain. And for all we know, that next phase might be uh, a Zenith. Um, okay. So I haven't read that sign in a while. I want to make sure what it said. It's been it's been a bit since I've been here. I need to look. The power of human retrospective memory deprives us of the wisdom that we rarely feel the future before it happens, good or bad. Like we make up, you know, portents and foreshadowing in retrospect. But that's that's a convenient illusion. I hate these guys. And I'm not. I don't. I don't need to wear 
gold boots to walk through the nether. I refuse to. I'm old. Uh, right. So on the one hand, uh, these crossovers and direct-to-consumer products feed the demands that Captain keep the magic game and universe pure and fight predatory practices by wizards. On the other hand, it shows the futility of the backlash to The Walking Dead and ameliorates concerns about the intellectual property by clearly branding universes beyond as something completely separate. The nuances of universes beyond split the diverse demographics that make up Captain, uh, leaving only what truly unites the format, but I'll, I'll get to that. So I was involved with the formation of Captain. I've been there for most of the important parts of its history. This isn't about Captain so much, though. It's a collection of lessons learned from having experienced a bunch of people getting together online to accomplish a goal. Uh, but I will be talking about that through the lens of the Captain format. So let me hit some bullet points on the history. The Walking Dead crossover was announced with an unprecedented backlash. A YouTuber, not me, I'm not, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm just an asshole with a YouTube account, uh, suggested the format and set up some online spaces, your Reddit, your Discords, for that format. Those online spaces were overrun with Nazis because they were not moderated. My guess is that only one person was surprised by that happening. The Nazis got banned. The YouTubers shut down those spaces because of the Nazis. And yes, I am making this list in chronological order. The community made new online spaces and continued to create the format. The community found uh, some bigots, and they banned them too. Then the doldrums set in, and I ended that. And then we passed the Constitution and we had elections. Then nothing happened until Universes Beyond was announced. And for all I know, nothing is still happening. As of writing, nothing's happening. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Look, for all I know, that is the same line I just read twice. Look, lesson one, people will use your organization for their own bullshit. See, the community was on Discord almost exclusively at this point, right? Because our other social media were run by members who had gone dark. They had taken a piece of the format and left and would not respond to communications. What remained were people who were legitimately interested in making the format successful and idiot dipshit bigots with their own plans. Those bigots tried the whole, let's pretend that Trans people don't exist under the guise of no politics. And they tried the whole, let's ban the unracist cards under the cover of, let's do a freedom, you guys. And if the Discord mods were half as smart as they are, they still would have been caught covertly coordinating and being bigots, and they still would have been thrown out. And do you hateful, oppositional, defiant, disorder, little trolls know what you should do next time? Like, from someone who knows how you got caught and who gave some of your names to the people who gave your names to the people who threw you out? Like, do you want the knowledge and experience you lack distilled into words? Don't use groups on the internet to further your puny culture battles. Your unmoderated wonderland, unmoderated? Unmoderated wonderland is just a, a safe space where you can congregate in your little in-groups and shit on smaller out-groups. And you expect other people to just take that when you would never take it yourself. And I know you wouldn't, because in the spaces where decent people congregate and hold each other accountable, scum like you are in the minority, and you run away crying to your hateful little communities on the fringe, and you create nothing. Nothing. Oh, man. These walls were so great on paper, and they have a lot of questions in execution. Anyway... So let me give you a scenario. If your local game store, right, if your local game store has a free farting policy, it'll smell like ass. And you may find some virtue in your ability to ignore that miasma, and you might even think that you are a strong person for doing that. But other people will realize that nothing about that local game store will be worth the ass smell. And those people are not weak or degenerate or sphincter Nazis. It's just that you don't offer them anything that's worth having your digested burrito particles float into their nose. It's just not worth it. Not even close. Look, everybody wants to make unmoderated spaces, right? If you want to start something on the internet, you want 
people to be able to, to be who they are and talk about what they want to talk about. Nobody wants to be the bad guy that says no. But whatever your group is based on, yeah, I really fucked this up. Uh, whatever your group is based on, democratic ideals, standing against predatory business practices, whatever it is, there will be people who will join that group for the primary goal of furthering their own personal ideology, like racism. These people are the first ones to kill your organization. They will take every ounce of enthusiasm and work that other people are willing to put into your goals, and they will bend them to meet their own goals, their own ends. Because, you know, their thing is that they will unethically use others as a means for their... Oh, fuck, damn it. Unethical, but with gravity. I don't know. Look, they'll, they'll unethically use people for their own ends because they're bad people. And I, I wish I had a test for rooting them out. I really don't. I mean, maybe, you know, notice how some people are adamant about stuff that isn't intuitively important, maybe, like a ban list of racist cards. Like, who gives a shit? I don't know. Just, just keep an eye out. That's all I can tell you. Lesson two, you need leadership. Or at least a direction. I, I had dialed back my involvement in the early days because things were moving very quickly and it was not possible for someone who was casually invested to meaningfully contribute. And that, God, that is just funny to say now. Um, I occasionally checked back in, um, you know, just, just to kind of see how things were doing. And after they banned all the bigots, one of the check-ins revealed that there was very little happening. Yeah, let's stop that. And to keep those things off. So, uh, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, and they were just waiting. Um, I call this the doldrums. They, they were just waiting to get social media accounts from members who'd gone dark. They were waiting for a member who'd gone dark with the, nailed it, who'd gone dark with the draft constitution to come back. They were waiting for someone to do something about the format's Nazi reputation. And I'll talk more about that later. But why? Because there was no leadership. Now, unfortunately, I'm not a leader. I am a fucking asshole, but I am motivated. And I think it was really cool of Google Voice to turn that text from asshole to asshho. As hilarious as it is homophobic, Google Voice. When I indicated earlier that I ended this, I, that's not how it went down. That's not how it went down at all. Uh, I said that because I knew one person would shut this video down at that moment. Um, I like that person, I respect that person, but their buttons are really easy to push and they think they're unpushable and it is their greatest weakness and their buttons are big and red. I mean, who can resist pushing a big red button? Um, I'm only human, guys. The thing I notice is that in that environment, most people will resist things out of fear rather than to push things out of conviction. Without authority to power or direct people, they would do nothing except resist someone taking authority. Uh, I see Google Voice decided to capitalize the A in authority, and I'm glad to see that it is also a fan of the Turn of Millennium War and Ellis book crafted under DC's wet Wildstorm imprint. <sighs> so you need leadership, real leadership. Um, we muddled through, and I'll cover that in lesson four. Um, you just need it. So, lesson three, don't panic. And I mean it, do not panic. We were actually, they were actually doing one thing when I checked back in. They were talking about changing the name of the format from Captain. I believe that the leading candidate for change was Young Goblin Robocop. It was crushing it in the polls. Now, I come down hard on one side of this, so my retelling is not objective. I mean, kids, none of this is objective. But this part, I'm not even tempering. So the deal is that the Nazis and the 12-year-olds who could have adopted any antisocial guys to piss off the authority figures in their lives, but instead chose Nazism, so basically more Nazis. And the bigots who weren't Nazis but got banned because they didn't expect to get caught for bannable behavior had all tried to paint the format as Nazis and started imitating the format on different platforms as a, mean of pet as a means of petty revenge. This was a new crisis, and it's a legitimate crisis, but on the face of it, a, a deeply unserious one. So, the deal with everyone in the Venn diagram of 12-year-olds on the internet and right-wing extremists in hobbyist spaces is that, absent power, they're destructive, self-indulgent, and emotional. 
remember this phrase. If there's no dopamine, there's no notsamine. Don't don't remember that phrase. Where was I? Okay, yeah, so absolutely there are a few that hate sub to like their political enemies and they give little down votes and replies to every hated post without realizing how irrelevant or muted they are. I mean, yeah, okay, right, that happens. They're persistent in their existence, but not in their organization. So most of them went back to harassing Kelly Marie Tran or Catherine Kennedy or whichever Star Wars lady is the most responsible for the space movie not giving them enough dopamine. What about Picard? Hey, Picard is trash. It is trash. Because of men. Actually, I, I don't want to downplay the role of women in the modern era of Star Trek, so... Um, you know, this one was a team effort. The Star Trek Planet Shield it means us all. Anyway, four weeks before these shows could yell about Gina Carino being in Star Wars, and 16 weeks before they could complain about her being out of Star Wars. I didn't check the dates on that. I'm just making shit up. Uh, we voted to give serious thought to changing the name so that we could hand a big bucket of dopamine to those jerks. And we voted against doing that very stupid thing. And a lot of folks went dark because of it. Because they lost. And I mean, look, we were watching the t November 2020 U.S. presidential election unfolding while centrist members of our community decided to abandon a democratic organization because they lost an important vote. It had more irony than Tony Stark in the World Iron Man Championships ironing the mask of Philip, twin brother of King Louis XIV, because of panic. Because people panic. Look, even the greatest crises require a sensible, measured urgency, but none of them require panic. Four, be humble. Uh, so I pushed us to reach out to IT, to an IT person who had a new Reddit. I pushed for us to annoy members who'd gone dark to get our other social media accounts back. I pushed the social media content that redefined the format as something not Nazi. But we ended up waiting on a website. And when I learned about that, I pitched in money to get it up as soon as I heard it. Yay me, I did, I did some stuff. But a lot of people, a lot of people did some stuff. They did the work. I can annoy people all the live long day. It's, it's my gift, that and condescension. If you know what that means. They, if people don't want to do things, they won't do things. But these people wanted to do something and they did. Like, okay, it, douchebags all the time say, oh, it was a group effort. And they feel empowered to say that because they didn't see what I saw with this group of folks. It really was a group effort and I am a douchebag. But I'm not a douchebag because I'm saying this was a group effort here. That's it's an important distinction. Okay, that's completely, don't, don't, if you're listening to this in a don't, don't look now. It's, it's fine. I'm all, everything's fine. Um, would it have eventually worked out? I mean, maybe. But Captain's moment in the public eye was short. The shutdowns, the people going dark with accounts, magic platforms banning talk about Captain. That meant that time was critical. The format had a brief fading moment to be successful. Or so I thought, you know, when I came back, I considered the format dead already. I was, it was already too late. I mean, what could we do? But, but most of those folks really cared. They wanted to do the things that would make the format happen. And they deserve a chance to make that happen. And I'm a stupid asshole. You know, maybe I was wrong. You can't participate in a democracy without having that that nugget of humility and as soon as you lose it your perspective becomes it's my way or the highway listen to me or, or all is lost and you will burn down anything to get your way after all if they don't listen to you it's all going to burn down anyway right you need to accept that sometimes other people are right and then commit yourself to seeing the best in and executing on an idea that you think is bad or stupid or futile to the best of your abilities. And if you can't do that, you should you should turn in your gear and quit. I think the script may be going slightly longer than I can play Minecraft right now. 
Um, I write these on notebooks and I have new notebooks and they're different sizes so I can't measure my page length like I usually do. I mean, you know, as I say this, uh, I am very much aware those people might ban me from the Discord server for this video. Um, and that's wild, man. Those same people made me think this format could survive because they gave a shit. Those same... Anyway, we, we got we got everything together except we were still waiting for the Constitution. So, lesson five. Nothing is set in stone. The Constitution at this point was... For, well, okay, the Constitution at this point we couldn't access because it was on one person's Google Drive and they would locked everyone out. Um, and they had quit responding to messages. Like so many other people, they went dark and locked us out of critical infrastructure. Um, 17th verse, same as the 16th verse. Uh, so maybe the lesson at this point should not be to um, be reliant on one person alone. It, it was only after we made so much progress and started talking about drafting a new constitution and maybe sent like a dozen notifications to their drive inbox for access to the constitution that they emerged. And about a week after they emerged, we had a constitution to vote on. And at this point, it was up to 14 pages from the, well, it was originally a page and a half, but it was eight before that. Um, and it was 14 imperfect pages, but hey, you know, we needed a constitution and, you know, brief fading moment. So we approved it, imperfections and all. And I think a lesson about compromise goes hand in hand with the lesson about humility. What is important about this is the understanding that you must do things to move forward, but you can always come back and revise those things. You probably should. The things done in a crisis should be readdressed once the crisis is passed. Otherwise, you will live in an environment which is not made of reason, but which is made of compromises required in the immediacy of a moment that has passed. Currently, there are proposals on deck to change the Constitution. I haven't looked at them, but that type of proposal is absolutely necessary to keep going forward. Lesson six, great artists steal, but don't steal trash. And I know a lot of these seem obvious. Hey, look, humbleness is a virtue. Wow. Great. Humility is the word for that. With the Constitution approved, we could start making the format. No? Right. Elections. You do elections. I will be brief and say that I view the conduct of national politics in my country, the United States, with disdain. And I naively assumed that everyone would share those feelings and welcome a, a clean slate and a discussion of ideas on the merits. Instead, the election cycle pulled directly from our national politics, descending immediately into what is best described as discord drama. And that suitcase and dishonesty was to essentially find the bottom 14 candidates out of 12. So look, it's not necessary to reinvent the wheel when you're making something, but you should at least take the best parts of those things to copy existing structures and I'm definitely, I gotta go. I'm gonna, I gotta sign out of Minecraft here, but I'm gonna keep talking. To copy existing structures in their flawed implemented forms out of convention ignores the ideal, perhaps platonic form from which their true function comes. Lesson seven, this is the last one. Have a sense of urgency. But the format was running. And like I said in the beginning video, the goal is to make the system and to let it go. They could start making its own, making the format its own thing that would, no, again? Okay, yeah, all right. One of those elected people resigned on their first day of work. The constitution required stopping all official activities for a new election. And unlike the previous election, which was an emergency first time election with expedited rules, this was a normal election which dictated weeks of waiting. So. We were waiting again. That's what the Constitution says, after all. I am trying to give valuable observations without editorializing. I'm going to editorialize at the very end here. But I am not 100% sure why the elected officials of the Captain format haven't used this time to visit Cancun, since they apparently can do nothing else of value in the interim. I hear that's what politicians do. It is important to do what you can when you can. The systems you set up to resolve conflict and define a standard status quo are great, 
They are not a set of handcuffs that you fashioned for yourself. That's self-defeating. What do we need to do now? Why can't we do that? What can I do to get that done? What can I do to get the next step done? How do I prepare for the step after that? These are questions that people ask when they have urgency in accomplishing a goal. In magic, we are expected to play very strictly within the rules. If you break the rules, you're cheating and you shouldn't do that. Remember that um, kerfluffle a few years ago? Like two guys in a tournament made a gentleman's agreement about one guy not attacking with the creature with the implication the other guy wouldn't do this thing. So one of them had a lot of life. Um, so anyway, the, the second guy did the thing and the first guy attacked, I think. I don't remember it. I haven't been able to Google it. It's something like that. It's not, it wasn't technically cheating, but it was a dick move. And in a zero-sum literal game like Magic, that's a dick move. In an organization where you're trying to achieve a goal for a common good, solving problems with solutions not forbidden by your rules is a virtue. Let the dog play fucking basketball. You can't just pass your turn and put your hand down. You need to look for any way to advance your board state. If you're not a magic player, I apologize for the lingo. I feel like I got, got kind of inside baseball. Air Bud isn't a magic thing. That was, that was a separate rep. Look, if you find a gap in the rules, it's dangerous. Use it to get things done. And then remember lesson five and fix the rules. You have to aspire to win and act on that. Not aspire to play by the rules and park your ass out of fear. That's the lessons I've learned. Uh, people will hijack your bullshit. Um, you need leadership. Don't panic. Be humble. Nothing is set in stone. Don't steal trash and have a sense of urgency. Finally, and this is this is my postscript. Um, I'll talk directly about Captain. With the announcement of Universes Beyond, we realized that if the Captain format was fully operational and offering a play experience different from its parent format commander, it would be well positioned to capitalize on this and sell itself on the back of Universes Beyond. I mean, at time of writing, we're still waiting. On Thursday, I saw someone saying it was a spite-based format, and I wanted to object, first instinct. But I couldn't do that in good conscience. I mean, banning cards, expelling Nazis and bigots, fighting over the name change, the election mess, they were all energetic oppositional events. Five months later, all we can offer is Commander with a smaller card pool and a slightly higher moral ground. Looking back, the moments of spite-driven fighting were undoubtedly what engaged the community the most. And that's a challenge. And challenges can be overcome. I think that one's solvable, but I have no answers for the format's biggest challenge at the moment. No, no, one, no one's playing it. The Discord has 400 members. Elections get about four dozen votes. Spell table games rarely fire with four players. Th those are games of magic of Magic the Gathering on a server with 400 Magic players. I, <laughs> damn. I, I was the first and last guy to bang the, we need to play this drum. When folks got elected, I stepped back because I expected them to use their political cachet to drive participation, but, but that didn't happen. You need a unique experience to get people to play. You can't craft that unique experience if you can't change the format. You can't change this format democratically if your democratic community is united not by play or by a specific experience, but by spite for cards. I believe lots of people still in the format don't have that humility I talked about earlier. They're here simply because they've gotten their way so far. If a coin had landed the other way, they would have been gone, dark like all the other folks. That might be the scariest takeaway from this. Beyond, you know, some collection of rules for a game played by teens, when you buy high ideals like democracy on the backs of low desires like hate or spite, you're not buying those ideals. You're renting them. Uh, I'm a stupid asshole, though. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I, I actually had a whole bunch of bits uh, talking about possible failed states of organizations that would look like, you know, like not specifically captain format, uh, but like in a broad sense of how organizations fail. But um, 
I am. This is so long already. Way past. Way past what I thought it would be. Anyways, I'll just say, uh, keep asking questions. Keep learning. Keep making good art.